We want to begin an introduction of fiber optics into the local area network equipment, and that typically brings us to switches. So here I have a, a picture of a Cisco family of switches. Uh, this is one of their enterprise uh, campus style type switches. And in, where does fiber optics play a role in, in this type of equipment? Well, it plays a major role. As we look at the role of switches in a local area network, here I've got four switches that are stacked on one on top of the other, very similar to a typical IDF or MDF in, a, in a, any company. If you look at the, the ports that are available for our users, which are typically these over here, when you look at those ports, because there is no connection between one switch and another switch, then the users on the bottom switch would not be able to talk to the, the one above it, and the ones that's in the, um, the second one, third one down would not be able to talk to any other switch. So the way that we interconnect our users when we have separate switches, like you see here in a stack, is by uplinks. The, the issue of uplinks is that uplinks typically, and that's designated as I'm showing you here, these are the areas on the switch that are designated for uplinks. And they're always higher speed than the typical port for the user. So over here are the users. And in most cases on the switch area, as you look at a switch, typically your uplink ports are over here. Uplink ports are always going to be higher bandwidth than the typical port for the user. So let's say over here our users are at 100, 10, 100. Then our uplinks are going to have to be a gig or higher. If our ports for our users are going to be a gig, say 10, 100, 1 gig, which I would love, then our uplink ports would have to be at the 10 gig or possibly 40 gig standards to uplink our users from one switch to another. Now there are better ways of connecting switches than using uplinks. Uh, the 3700 series uses a proprietary fiber optics ring, uh, not, I'm sorry, not a fiber optics, but a token ring system, which is used by Cisco. I think um, HP Pro Curve switches have something similar. Uh, uplinks are typically what are used because they're low cost. They're not the best way of interconnecting individual switches that you see here, but they're one way. Now typically uplink ports are going to use a standard, a modular standard called GBIC. Uh, GBIC was a way of getting gigabit into a standard modular form that allowed uh, many manufacturers to participate in this standard connector. Let's take a look. This is a slot that will hold four mini GBICs. But let's take a look at this whole idea of fiber optics connector standards that are typically seen in switches. The GBIC interface was basically a transceiver, uh, generally from fiber optics to the internal connections inside of a switch. So GBIC is some kind of a transceiver. It can be a CAT5 or CAT6 connection. Uh, most often it's going to be fiber connection and it would be LC, ST, SC type connectors and that would allow you to plug in to a GBIC connect interface and then plug it into say a switch or a router or something of that nature. It looks something like this. This is your classic GBIC. It was, it was relatively large uh, this is one of the originals. The back end of the GBIC is what plugs into a switch router, typically a switch. You see this most often in switches. Uh, on the front end would plug in to say a, a SC, ST, LC type fiber optic connector. And what was interesting was all the vendors cooperated on these types of modules or these tra transceivers. So you could plug the same thing into Cisco, into HP Pro Curve, uh, into any kind. So this was great. This was a great cooperation among vendors that made fiber optic connections to switches and routers much easier. The next variation of GBIC was the mini GBIC. And here you see a nice picture of a mini GBIC. This was a much smaller connector, basically the same functionality. 
uh, gigabit to the internal connections of a switch or a router or whatever device you want to connect it to. It could be in something simple as, say, a, a fiber optic server network card. So here you see a very interesting fiber optic network card, a NIC, that actually has four mini GBIC connectors into it. So this is a pretty hefty network card where you could actually put, put connect up four different gigabit fiber optic connections into one server. This is great for virtualization where you're supplying a gigabit connection to multiple virtualized servers in, in one, one physical server. And so this is very popular. This is the mini GBIC from the front end so you can actually see the fiber optics uh, transmitter and sensor. Uh, this is what it looks like right looking right down uh, into the inside of a fiber optic GBIC. So here back again to our switch I see four mini GBIC interfaces on this this module here onto this uh, switch and so that allows me to uplink or connect four gigabit full duplex uplinks to say an IDF or back to an MDF or up to other switches in a stack. So this is typically where you're going to see fiber optics in your local area network equipment. So let's go back again. To interconnect these switches down here with the one above it and the one above it and the one above it, we typically use uplink ports. By going into each switch, we configure those ports to be uh, to function as uplinks and then we hook up fiber optics a GBIC connector and then fiber up or it can be cat5 or actually cat6 if it's going to be gigabit could be cat5e also and then we would uplink one port into the other and that would actually daisy chain or connect the users from each switch all together so they could see each other one or two of those ports then would take the entire switch array, all four switches, back to, say, a main uh, collapsed backbone in the MDF, such as a, um, a Catalyst 6500, or, and tie all those together. GBICs allowed a variety of fiber optics to work with them. Multi-mode, single mode, long distance single mode and so you see a variety of fiber optics standards that could be used with the GBIC and the mini GBIC uh, transceiver. This is a Cisco Nexus switch. Very very incredible piece of equipment. Let's take a look at one of the 8 port modules. This is 8 port 10 gig module that that is used by this particular switch. You can see that uh, it's an amazing piece of equipment. The the kind of horsepower that it takes to handle uh, 10 or I'm sorry 8 10 gig ports is just phenomenal. Chips, clock rate to handle that kind of traffic is, is amazing. So here's a uh, Cisco switch. Let's take a look at a 32 port 10 gig switch. Now, now it's going to pull out the so this is a module that actually handles 32, 32 10 gig ports. Uh, these are GBI, mini GBICs, so you can use fiber, you can use CAT6, uh, whatever interface GBIC module you want. But it's, it's amazing when you think of a product like this that can handle this many 10 gig ports. This is a smaller series of Cisco switches, and again, it's a three stack. Uh, they're just showing off their different models, but it helps us understand how typically switches are done. Here we have some users down here. Uh, here is our GBIC uplink port. You can see each of these different models has one GBIC that we could hook up uh, gigabit fiber, gigabit CAT5, CAT6. Um, they also have an RJ45 if you want to use that one. Saves you having to buy the module. But again, if I want these users and these users and these users to talk, I have to uplink them. So I could use CAT5 to uplink this one. Um, I could use a GBIC and take a CAT5, I'm sorry, CAT6, 
uh, and uplink this one to this one. These two would uplink these two switches. Then I could put a, G a mini GBIC in here with a CAT6 connection, RJ45, and then use CAT6 to connect it up to this RJ45. Then I could use this GBIC with gigabit fiber to take it up to an MDF. And that will allow me to interconnect all three switches and take the traffic from these th these three switch individual switches and all the users up to, say, an MDF. A quick close-up view shows us this particular uh, switch series has power over Ethernet, uh, which is shown by the yellow markings around the jack. So here's your mini GBIC, your normal uh, gigabit uplink port if you want to use CAT5, I mean, you want to use an RJ45 cable with CAT6. I don't know why I want to stick with CAT5 on a gigabit connection. Won't work. Uh, and here's your normal user jacks, probably 10-100.